Thank you to Keeps Hair Loss Prevention for sponsoring this video. In this episode, we perform some boat maintenance while at sea and then jump in the water in the second deepest part of the ocean on our 1500 mile sail back home from the Caribbean. This season of Sailing Noodles features Bobby and Taylor as we sail around the Caribbean in our 1989 CT56. Thank you so much to our patrons. In this next series of videos, we are participating in the SaltyDogSailing.org Homeward Bound Rally. There were almost 200 boats in the rally. You can learn more about the Salty Dog Sailing from their website. In the previous video, we made some final preparations to the boat, had one last night out, and then set sail on a 1,500 mile sail back to Annapolis. Hey guys, before we get this one underway, I want to talk to you about Keeps. Do you have full luscious hair? Do you want to keep it? <laughs> well, then you need Keeps. Did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male powder baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have it. One of the hard things about living on a boat is doing things like going to the doctor. But with Keeps, you can actually visit a doctor online and have the medication delivered right to your home. So there's no need to go to a doctor's office and all that hassle. The Keeps.com website has thousands of testimonials and lots of before and after pictures so you can see just how well their products work. So if you notice you're losing your hair, do something about it. For a limited time, go to keeps.com slash sailing and get 50% off your first order or click the link down in the description. So if you notice you're losing your hair, do something about it with Keeps and keep your hair like me. <laughs> yeah. Good morning on day two. I was able to get maybe maybe six hours of sleep last night. I didn't get even that much the night before, so I'm happy about that, I guess. Motored most of the night just because we're having electrical issues. The generator is putting out power, but it's not getting to the inverter charger, and we didn't have a whole lot of sun yesterday, so our batteries were a little low. So we couldn't charge the batteries with the generator, which is pretty important, and because uh, we don't have enough solar. That's why I always, want, I always want the generator to be a luxury, not a necessity. Right now it's a necessity. So we had to motor all night because I don't have a very big alternator on the generator, I mean on the motor, which is another thing I want to fix. I need to put like a 100 amp alternator on there. We actually didn't have any bad weather, but there was a lot of squalls like before sunset. So we just decided to keep the Janela out only and motor sail. This morning uh, before I took over at 6 a.m. and Dave helped me get the spinnaker up and we put the mizzen up. And uh, now I'm gonna troubleshoot some electrical issues and hopefully we have a pretty good day sailing. And another issue we're having is the voltage getting to the radios and the instruments is too low. It's like 10 volts. It should be, you know, 12 and a half. So I've got to trace that down and figure it out. I right, was able to troubleshoot the voltage problem here. So this is the main grounding bus for the instruments right here. And when I checked it, it was going to like 10 and a half volts. So the grounding wire going back to the main ground is uh, bad or corroded or not putting enough voltage through. There's another grounding bus down here that is getting normal voltage. So I'm gonna jumper it from that bus over to that other bus and it should then hopefully get all the voltage it needs. All right, so that fixed the problem. I mean, looking at that grounding wire that went to that bus is really small. Yeah, the grounding wire connecting that bus is way too small. I jumpered uh, another, this thicker ground wire from another ground over to that bus. So it's powering everything now and we got 11.7 volts, which is well, still a little low, but I mean, within normal operating range, I think everything will function normally down to about 10 and a half volts. So I know the chart bottles are going down to like nine and a half. The radios are probably around 10, 10 and a half. So, you know, at least everything works that way now. Well, more troubleshooting here this time with the generator. It is putting out power because I got my little gauge right here, which tells me my voltage coming off the generator. When I turn it on, it's going to 240 volts, but the power is not going from the panel to the inverter charger. I've got to figure out why. So not only do I know it's getting power because I can see it on the gauge, but also because the, there's two legs, right? On, on American 220 volts or 240, it's not like European. European just has a single line going to your house that is 220 or 240 volts. I'm not sure which one, one of the two. And so your whole house is wired in 220, right? American is wired in 110, and if you need 220 at your house to run like a dryer or something heavy duty, they run a second 110 line, and then you put them in parallel there, and then you've got 220. So that's the way this is. You have two 110 voltage coming out of the generator to make 220, and it connects through here, and I see that I'm getting 220 volts on the panel, and the air conditioners are running, because it takes, the air conditioners and the dryer and stuff takes one leg, and that was still being powered, right? 
the leg that goes to the inverter charger is not putting power to the inverter charger. So there's a wiring issue, maybe it's a breaker or a fuse or something, I gotta figure out what's going on. Okay, uh, got her working. Uh, problem was, is you got a uh, you got a main breaker for power coming from the generator, you got a main breaker from shore power. So I had the power on going to the generator and it's got two outputs, right? Because it's a double breaker. Well, only one side was letting power through, this side wasn't letting power through. So I didn't have an extra one of these, so I robbed it out of the main breaker side and then pulled it apart and I was replacing the wiring on the back. And when I did that, I found this wire that is not in the best shape. So I don't know if it's this or just the wire, but I put the other one on over here, wired it back up and now it works. So Whee! I will go ahead and put this one back in on the other side, just so the wiring stays in the same place, doesn't short anything out. but. Our generator is working again, so that greatly improves our options. We are on day two out here. We were sailing most of the morning. We had to shut the motor off because Bobby had to do some work with the generator and the inverter charger. So now that he's gotten that all figured out, we're just motoring right now. We're dead downwind. And yeah, so how's the crew feeling? Day two. Super relaxed. I love it. Right now, we're actually going through some of the, the second deepest water in the world aside from the Marianas Trench. So I think we saw like 27,000 feet deep, which is insane. And we're also about 10 hours away from any land. So we're in the middle of Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. So we've got a completely clear horizon. And yeah, it really feels like we're out here. I wish it was time for a dip. Time I'm sweating. Dip, uh, it, uh, it's so hot. <laughs> yeah, actually. We caught up to Soulmate. Naughty Dogs, Naughty Dogs, Soulmate. Hey, Soulmate, this is Naughty Dogs. Hey, we're thinking about going to neutral, throwing a line out the back, and jumping in 25,000 feet of water. You guys game? <laughs> Heck <no>. yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay, we're in too. So we're just going to go to neutral. Come on over next near us, not right on us. And we'll go to neutral. We have a floating line and a fender out the back. We're only going to be in the water for a few minutes because we don't want to get eaten by pelagic sharks, okay? <laughs> Roger that, sounds good. going on. We just met up with our, our buddy boat Soulmate and first of all we saw some whales which was super exciting. Second of all unfortunately our friend Loretta got hurt. She, she fell into a hatch during the whole excitement but now we're all recuperated and we've decided that we're gonna go swimming in the deepest ocean. Let's do this. Are I'm you ready? scared. I'm scared when I'm ready. Yeah she bled into the water a little bit so she, she's baited the water for sharks so uh, she should be fine. All right, so we are uh, about to get in the water. They put a line out the back. We're about to do the same thing. We're doing it! Woo! Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> one, two, five. Yeah. Come on. All right, guys, what did y'all think about jumping in the uh, second deepest place in the ocean, 26,000 feet? Unreal. That's Beautiful. a once-in-a-lifetime experience for sure. Yeah. Yes, once in a lifetime. <laughs> they don't do it again. It <laughs> happen again. Uh, I thought it was great. It was great. It was. It was. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. All right. Well, now I'll put some uh, not underwear on and let's get, get moving again. It was really amazing just to like see through the goggles and see nothing but blue. Tiny yeah. blue. Yeah. That, I mean, and sharks. That was sharks. no sharks. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. Crazy. Woo. All right, let's get back at it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, guys, to a successful uh, cheers. Cheers. swim cheers. in the deepest part. There you go. And cheers right. to you fixing our problems. Yeah. yeah. All of our cheers, problems. Bobby. I spent probably a couple hours working on shit today, but we got it done. So there you go. Well, you've had a nap and a beer. So. Nap and a beer. Nap I'm great. And, and, and a swim. And a swim in the deepest cheers. part of the ocean. Cheers.
All right, so the wind finally turned in our favor and we put the spinnaker back up. It's nice to turn the motor off. It's uh, much calmer out here. You know, you have that buzzing going on, but spinnaker's up. We're sailing right along. We got soulmates right over there. We're shaming them probably into putting their spinnaker up soon, I'm sure. And then we'll all be sailing. Nothing quite like downwind sailing with the spinnaker out. I mean, it's just conditions like these. We got 12 knots, 11, 10, 10 to 12 knots of wind. So we're doing like five to six knots. You know, the seas aren't too big. Downwind, not bad at all. Well, uh, yeah, we did shame them into putting their spinnaker out. So now we're all sailing. It's kind of nice. So it's been a pretty good day. Uh, yesterday was a great day too, starting out especially in the evening when the wind changed and things got a little funky. Then we had some problems with our uh, instruments, you know, too low voltage on those. And the generator wouldn't power our inverter charger. The, the day ended not on a good note. Today, much better. I mean, started off a lot of hard work. You know, I got the voltage problem fixed, fixed the generator, and uh, we motored eh, from about 11 o'clock onward until about now. And uh, now we got the, you know, our spinnaker out and uh, man, it's perfect conditions. It looks nice and clear behind us. Hopefully there's no squalls. I think we're just gonna leave the radar on tonight and uh, probably fly the spinnaker at night and just look for squalls and I'll make sure everybody, uh, you know, pays attention to that radar. That's the key. Man, I'm telling you, it's a great night for it. 12, 14 knots of wind. We're making six and a half, seven knots on the spinnaker. I mean, there's some clouds behind us, doesn't look, well, maybe there's a squall back there, but we're gonna keep it up and pay attention to the radar tonight. It's just so much more comfortable when we got the spin to grab, there's a lot less roll. When you got a sail up, especially one that's full, like it is now, we're always heeled over just slightly, especially downwind, it's great. You're just heeled over just slightly, so when a wave comes from behind us, which they are right now, you roll that way, and then instead of, if you didn't have a sail up, you would just spring back and go the other way, and then you'd do all this. But when you have a good sail up like this, you spring over a little bit and then you slowly come back to level and then maybe you go back. So you, there's a lot less roll, it's so nice. And a following sea, it's great. Hey guys, just checking in with everybody for the little video, daily video diary that we're gonna be doing. So yesterday I didn't do a video diary. Um, it was kind of, the first day for me is always just a bit of an adjustment day. Just kind of getting used to, you know, what the wind and the waves are doing and I usually get a little bit drowsy. So yesterday was kind of just a, a mellow day. It was pretty good though, we had good conditions. We got to fly the spinnaker for the first time. And so last night I was on night watch from 12 midnight until 3 a.m. And it was a pretty good watch. The wind was a little crappy. We were like almost going dead downwind. So uh, we had to motor for a little bit. And I was pretty tired. I didn't get any sleep really before and I didn't get that much sleep after. But hopefully tonight, I'm doing the same watch tonight, hopefully it will be a little better. I won't be as tired. Today is day two, and it's been such an awesome, awesome day. This morning, we had to fix a few little mechanical issues, or Bobby did, and then shortly after, I was behind the helm, just kind of looking at the GPS, and I remember Bobby saying something about the uh, Puerto Rican trench, how it's the second deepest point in the ocean, aside from Mariana's Trench. And so I remember him saying that months ago, and then I looked in the GPS and realized that that was where we were. So we were in like 27,000 feet of water, and our buddy boat Soulmate, who you guys obviously probably know, they were a couple miles out, so we met up with them, and we both turned our engines off, went into neutral, and we, we both decided to jump in the water, because I think that's such a, a bucket list thing that you'll never, I'll never get to say that I, done again. Being able to say that you've jumped off a sailboat in the middle of the ocean into the second deepest part of the ocean is really cool. Yeah, other than that, we've just kind of been hanging out in the cockpit, talking all day. Sid made a really awesome dinner and then now the sun's about to go down. We're just kind of enjoying the evening and I played a little bit of guitar. This is my favorite time of day to just sit and relax and either play music or listen to music. It's such a peaceful time and it's not its not super hot so you can actually go to the bow of the boat and not be melting. It's just absolutely beautiful out here having no visual point of land in sight. Like 360 degrees, it's just horizon and ocean. It makes you feel very small, but it's really beautiful. It's something that, I mean, not a lot of people really get to see or experience. So. I'm feeling very thankful for this journey 
And I think that's about all I've got to say for today, but I will check back in with you guys tomorrow.